Here we are standing at the Museum of Zoology of the National Taiwan University. The museum itself is as old as the university itself. It was established in 1928 during the colonial period of Japan in Taiwan. Since 1928, many valuable collections have been collected for the museum. Uh, the collection mainly coming from the Taiwan itself and the nearby region, Southeast Asia. In early days, the collections are focused on the economically valuable um, species, such as rodents and the fish. And um, in, re uh, in recent years, uh, the collection has been expanded to other taxonomic groups, including like bats, shrews, uh, larval fish, and earthworms, uh, contingent, contingent upon the research interests of the researchers uh, in uh, Department of uh, Zoology or other department in the department uh, in the College of Life Sciences. The collections are used for the research and the education purpose. Okay. Before 1999, those um, all the collections are stored in the building number one in the National Taiwan University. Uh, in 1999, uh, a new building was uh, built. And uh, all the collection except the fish collection are moved to the building of life science where we are standing right now. The collections are stored in three different rooms. One is the exhibition room where we are standing right now, and also a dry specimen room and a wet specimen room in the fifth floor of this building. Since 2007, a special features uh, exhibit has been launched. Uh, it's featured bioacoustics. As you can see here, it includes a tooth whale, a baleen whale, an Asian elephant, and some birds uh, in this room. Let's look at the cassowary here. This is a bird from Southeast Asia. You can find them in New Guinea and nearby area. It's one of the tallest birds, it's, uh, only second to the ostrich and the emu. Cats already have a three toed feet. Okay. And they have really long claws that has very, this is a very serious weapon. According to the Guinness Book of Records, the cassowary is the most dangerous bird in the world. And they can inflict serious uh, injury to humans and other animals. The cassowary have a, a spongy soft uh, structure here called cap. Okay. What do you think is the function of this cap? Several functions of the cat have been proposed. One of them is this structure is the secondary sexual characteristic for this species. The males or females use this structure to fight with each other uh, to gain dominance in their group. Or it can also function as a uh, something that allows the bird to walk through the dense uh, rain tropical forest without hurting their head. Or they can use this structure uh, to brush apart the leaf litter to find food in the under uh, forest ground. And uh, also there's a uh, important function that's been revealed in recent years. This function might be associated with the production of sound of this animal. This structure may help cassowary to produce very low frequency sound, which can be passed. Uh, much easier than high frequency sound in the dense forest. This is the greater bird of paradise. Uh, these are, this species also coming from the dense rainforest of New Guinea. Uh, 
just like the emu, uh, like the cassowary we talked about earlier. Uh, all the birds of paradise, the males have this very uh, elongated and also elaborated feather. This particular species here has a leg type mating system. So several males will gather in a tree in the rainforest. They'll be dancing, singing, and showing off their plumage, trying to attract the attention of female coming to the leg. And after the show, at the end of the show, only one or two males will be able to copulate with the female. Let's look at some native species here. This is a crested serpent eagle. Uh, you can find them across the forest that area um, in tropical Asia. Uh, it's a very common species in Taiwan, particularly in the late morning. If you go around the near Taipei, the wooded area, you can hear or see them in the sky. This species has a large looking head. It's a very long feather in the back of its head. When this species is alarmed, it will erect the crest and then the head will appear framed by the rock of the feather. of sugar can feel. They live in the farmland or in the grassland and also uh, some um, other forested area as well. But uh, in the sugar can feel, they can fall and uh, destroy the sugar can feel very easily. You can look at their sharp teeth, they can uh, fall the sugar cans uh, by gnawing on them. Or sometimes they also tunnel through the irrigation system and they can flood the whole sugar can feel. common species in Taiwan. You can find them all the way from the lowland up to 2,500 meters in elevation. Uh, they live in the forested area. So uh, they become, has become a major pet in the forest plantation. They would uh, take off the buds or would debark the trees and uh, devalue the, the value of the, of the lumber. These two are flying squirrels. This one is a white-faced flying squirrel, foremost and white-faced flying squirrel. And this one is a hairy-footed flying squirrel. Both of them are found in the forested area, but this small one we found above 1,500 meters in elevation. And this one is a more lowland species. Flying squirrels are not able to um, have power flights like birds or bats. They can only go. By changing the 
direction of the wrist bones, they can change the tautness of the membrane. Okay, and then they can glide from tree to tree. This big one can glide up to 75 meters. The museum also has lots of skeletal specimens. As you can see here, these are mainly for teaching purpose. This one is a, a dog, a house dog. This one is the wild boar. And this one is a very, very special animal. This is a Chinese pangolin here. That one is a Formosa macaque, a monkey. During the teaching, we can teach students to compare between like this one. The wild boar is an omnivore. Okay, you can see the structure of the teeth. And this one is a straight carnivore. Okay. So they compare the structure and the function of these uh, different anatomical uh, features. And uh, this one uh, is also an omnivore, but more uh, focused on the, the leaves, uh, the vegetation is their main diet. And the diet for the pangolin are ants. Okay. These are the ant eaters. So they have very strong claws that can dig into the termite mouth or can debark uh, the trees to get the insect out of the bark. So when they are on the ground, these strong claws are not uh, suitable for walking, so they will curl up their claws during the walking, when they're walking. We are now in the wet specimen room. But first of all, before I introduce the specimen in the can, I'm going to show you some specimen from the dry specimen room. These are the bird on the stick. Okay. The first one is a Formosan blue magpie. This is a uh, our national bird. The next one is called the Muller's Barbet. This is a Chinese bobo. It has a very distinct white head. And uh, Chinese bobo has a uh, sister species in Taiwan. This is uh, Taiwan bobo. There's no white head, you can notice. Next, I'm going to uh, show you a very unique group of birds in Taiwan, babbler. There's 16 uh, babbler species in Taiwan. Five of them are endemic in Taiwan and the 10 other species are endemic subspecies. This one is called Taiwan Zebia. It has a very unique white feather at the ear region. And this is a 
Taiwan left fin thrush. Okay. It has this white eyebrow and white whisker. The next one, a smaller one, is called Steers leucicla. Okay. This is a very common species in the mid elevation forest. And finally, the Taiwan Yuhina, a very small species. They would call like to meet you, to meet you, a very cute species. The Taiwan Yuhina has a very unique social organization. They are cooperative breeding birds, particularly their joint nesters, which means more than one pair of parents would put their eggs together in a nest. And they'll, raise, they'll hatch the eggs and also take care of the young together. Next, I'm going to show you some specimen from this room, from the West specimen room. In this jar, it contains a Promotion salamander. Taiwan has many high mountains and provide an isolated environment for the evolution of endemic species in Taiwan, including five species of salamander. And this one is the Promotion salamander. Next, I want to show you the UQ Kachika frog. This species is unique because during the breeding season, the male and female, they will copulate. That's about around uh, February. They'll copulate and lay eggs in the hot So they are also called. And I want to show you a very interesting species. This is the white plum blossom snake. It mimics the pattern of the bandit crate. 